Doctor Who has a weird and wonderful selection of villains, though none are perhaps as creepy and slimy as the Trickster. This immortal extra-dimensional alien was known for frequently messing around with the timeline, and just generally causing chaos for Sarah Jane Smith, a former companion of the Doctor. With a recent mention of the Pantheon of Discord, of which the Trickster was a member of, we thought it'd be a great time to revisit who this Doctor Who villain was, especially, as you never know, it may become relevant in the future. Greetings everyone, I'm Jack and welcome to TARDIS Central. This is Doctor Who Explained. If you want to keep up to date on all the latest Doctor Who news, lore and more, then hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from the team here at TARDIS Central. You can also follow us on social media for daily updates on the Doctor Who universe. As always, please let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you're talking about Doctor Who, we want to hear about it. So as I mentioned, today's episode of our Doctor Who Explained series is taking a look at the Trickster, a malevolent force of evil, hellbent on chaos and disrupting the timeline. Surely he'd be an obvious foil for the Doctor's time travel. However, the Trickster's actually a villain from this series, the Sarah Jane Adventures. Although the Trickster has met the Doctor and his reach across the universe is vast, but what do we know about the Trickster? What are his schemes to destroy the world? His brigades and legions doing his bidding around the cosmos? And importantly, what might he be planning next? Let's talk all things Trickster in this latest episode of our Doctor Who Explain series. Let's go. The Trickster first appeared in the story, Whatever Happened to Sarah Jane, from the first season of the series. The story saw Sarah Jane erased from existence, replacing everyone's memories and photographs with a woman named Andrea Yates. She even lives in the same house on Bannerman Road. The only person who can remember Sarah Jane is Maria Jackson. This is because of a Veron puzzle box, which was coincidentally given to her the night before. It's a silver cube with no real solution. Holding it does allow someone to retain memories of whatever was erased from the old timeline. Again, very convenient. The only people who remember are Maria and Andrea. Unable to deal with her reminder of what she's done, Andrea makes a deal with the cloaked trickster to erase Maria. We also get to see the original deal Andrea made back in 1964, where before her demise at a pier, the trickster appeared and offered to swap her and Sarah Jane's places. Thankfully, she's interrupted before making a third deal to erase Maria's father, Alan, from existence. But this woman has a thing for erasing her problems away. There's a lovely scene up in Limbo where we get a glimpse of a trickster's plan. Without Sarah Jane and her computer Mr. Smith, a meteorite would certainly destroy Earth. Revealing his featureless face and sharp teeth, he explains how important Sarah Jane is to the timeline, and how his next goal will be erasing the Doctor. Thankfully, Sarah Jane is restored to existence, Andrew is defeated, and the Earth is saved. However, the Trix is not quite done with Sarah Jane and the Bannerman Road gang just yet. The Trix returned in the next season with The Temptation of Sarah Jane Smith. The story sees the trickster using his grass companion, disguised as a young boy, to lure Sarah Jane back to 1951. This was the year that Sarah Jane's parents died, with the trickster thinking she'd be tempted to go back and save them. Sure enough, she and Luke wander through the time fissure and land in the 1950s. Not all hope is gone though. The Veron puzzle box once again comes into play, becoming active again and falling into possession of Ronnie and Clyde, protecting them with its boxy goodness. Clyde's words, not mine. Letting her emotions get the better of her, Sarah Jane disables her parents' car engine stopping him from being killed. This changes the future, meaning that when Sarah Jane and Luke return to find a post-apocalyptic destroyed London, with the trickster proclaiming that Sarah Jane gave him the world. With the town in 1951 located on a fault line, tampering with a fixed point allowed the trickster to enter reality. Sounds a little familiar. Anyway, in this destroyed London, humans are working as slaves, mining resources so the trickster can build a ship to conquer the whole universe. Thanks to a gamble involving some gut-wrenching self-sacrifice, the timeline is fixed, and the trickster fades. He never considered that someone would sacrifice himself to save the world. The trickster then vanishes from the universe again, screaming in agony. Meanwhile, the Veron puzzle box is left behind with the trickster's liberated grass slave. However, the trickster still has one last trick up his long sleeves. The Trickster's third and last television appearance was in the third series of the Sarah Jane Adventures, in an episode called The Wedding of Sarah Jane Smith. This episode was a crossover with Doctor Who, featuring a special guest starring role from David Tennant's 10th Doctor. The episode sees Sarah Jane falling mad in love with a man called Peter Dalton. However, something's not quite right. His house is deserted, with newspaper covering the windows and plastic wrap on the furniture. Making matters more concerning, he has no living relatives, and he proposes to Sarah Jane after a matter of weeks of dating. Oh, and also the engagement ring glows red 
bed, so you know something fishy is going on here. Sarah Jane seems to be in a trance, controlled by her ring. Out of a gang, only Clyde is a little suspicious of what's going on, with Luke taking a liking to Peter and Rani serving as a bridesmaid. However, the doctor is also nearby, bursting and screaming, stop this wedding now. This causes the trickster to materialise in a white gown, a nice change from his usual black, and disappear with Sarah Jane and Peter soon after. The trickster is single-handedly powerful enough to isolate Sarah Jane and Peter in their own second of time, repeating over and over again, out of sync with the rest of the universe. He does the same with the Doctor and the Bannerman Road gang, although thanks to a hit of Artron energy from Atardis, the trickster's powers are disrupted for a little bit. This allows the Doctor to materialise in Sarah Jane's second. It turns out that Peter died in an accident at his home. The trickster offered him a second chance at life and love if he were to marry Sarah Jane. In marrying her, all the memories of the alien hunting world fade and a new life would begin, once again allowing the trickster to take over the world. Peter, however, has already fallen in love for Sarah Jane and selflessly ends his deal with the trickster, throwing his ring at him. He catches fire and once again screams in agony as he leaves the universe. Soon after, Peter also fades from existence, putting an end to the trickster's schemes once and for all. Taking a brief departure from a trickster, it is important to note that he doesn't act alone. I'm not just talking about his grass slave either. He has a whole brigade seeking to change the course of history and alter people's lives. One of his attempts ended up creating a whole new world where Donna Noble never met the Doctor. This time beautiful from the heartbreaking episode Turn Left from Series 4 of Doctor Who was identified as a member of the brigade. They also had appearance in Torchwood as well. In 1927, the Brigade managed to smuggle a brain spawn, a parasitic worm-like creature to infect future US President Franklin D. Roosevelt. Their plan involved driving him mad, ensuring that the US wouldn't be able to stop Nazi Germany with the Second World War. Thankfully, this plan was foiled by Captain Jack and Angelo Coslanto, as depicted in Miracle Day's Immortal Sins. Just goes to show you what a dark show Tortured was, to be honest. Interestingly, this brigade are actually the only enemies we face in Doctor Who, the Sarah Jane Adventures, and Torchwood. Back in the late 2000s, the trickster and his friends were everywhere in the Hooniverse, creating chaos, messing with the timeline, and even creating their own alternate worlds. Especially now that Russ T. Davies is in charge of the Hooniverse again, could we be looking at a return of the trickster's antics? With contributions from the brigade, too, of course, it might actually be more likely than you think. As we learned in the wedding of Sarah Jane Smith, the trickster is a member of the Pantheon of Discord. They are a group of aliens from a different universe that thrive on chaos and take any opportunity to wreak havoc on ours. This might sound a little familiar, as we recently had two villains in the form of Neil Patrick Harris's Toymaker and Jinx Monsoon's Maestro who are the same. Perhaps it's a coincidence or maybe the trickster's return is just around the corner. It's not crazy speculation either. In the iPlayer exclusive spin-off, Tales of the TARDIS, we see the on-screen return of Clyde Langer. The series is designed as fan service extravaganza, filled with costumes, props and references galore. If you're a fan of a classic Doctor Who especially, it's an absolute treat. What's interesting about his appearance is he picks up a Veron puzzle box. It's interesting that it's a prop that should make a return appearance after all these years. Perhaps it's a sign of things to come very soon. Who knows? It wouldn't actually be impossible. You see, while we covered all of the Trix's TV appearances, there was at least one more that was intended. The fifth season of the Sarah Jane Adventures was left unfinished by the untimely death of star Elizabeth Sladen. One of these never filmed stories was The Battle of Bannerman Road, which would have been the season finale and seen the return of a trickster. Usually this sort of thing wouldn't be worth exploring too in depth, but there's something potentially really interesting here. The story would have revealed that the trickster had instilled his essence on Sky at the moment of her creation, manipulating events that led to Sarah Jane. Sky trick to half would have emerged causing all manner of troubles. Sarah Jane would have had to overload Sky, reversing her to a human form. Although her final form by the end of the episode would have been a dimensional entity banishing this trickster from reality and guarding him in an eternal prison forever. Sounds like it would have been a hell of a last hurrah for the trickster and a great ending to the sadly unfinished series. However, there's something very oddly familiar about all of this. You see, Sarah Jane would have also suspected Sky's lineage the entire time, having had her electrical properties analyzed prior to the events of the episode. She also grew with each of her appearances, a sort of omen that Sarah Jane couldn't ignore. That sounds like the Doctor scanning Ruby at the end of the Space Babies episode. The end of Doctor Who's return season has given us an answer to Ruby's lineage. As such, all those theories about her being the daughter of a trickster are sadly null. But there is also the unmistakable similarity between the trickster's theme in the Sarah Jane adventures and the song Ruby sang in The Devil's Chord. At this point, it sadly looks like a bit of a coincidence, which is a shame. And that's everything we know about the Trickster, a powerful villain that's the most famous appearances in the Sarah Jane adventures. However, back in the late 2000s, him and his brigade were everywhere across the Hooniverse. While he's not appeared for a while in the Doctor Who universe, it's hard to imagine he won't appear eventually. As a heads up, The Legend of Ruby Sunday, which is the penultimate episode of Doctor Who's first return season, might actually answer some questions on the legacy of Ruby Sunday. As such, part of our theory could be out of date by the time you watch this video. If not, 
it's probably spooky, I guess. Oh well, if you want to keep up to date on all the latest Doctor Who news, lore and more, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from a team here at TARDIS Central. You can also follow us on social media for daily updates on the Doctor Who universe. That's it from TARDIS Central, I've been Jack, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.